Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Class. Welcome to the Brazil Track Guide and Setup. It's been a while, uh, way, way later than expected uh, due to internet cards and also, well, uh, celebrations and uh, festivals going around here. But nevertheless, we're not too late for the Brazilian GP Sao Paulo Grand Prix this weekend, actually. And uh, yeah, uh, let's get into the track guide first, followed by the setup in. Well, it's also in the description if you want to take a look at it. And then we'll finally just have the full speed hot lap at the end. And very quickly, thank you to all subscribers and channel members for supporting us in your own way, uh, the way you love the most. And uh, you can do it too by hitting that like, hit that subscribe button, and then uh, leave a comment if you love to see something uh, or if you just want to give a good comment about it. Now, to start off the lap in Brazil, um, you're going to be looking for that far right, uh, almost to the middle right of your screen. That's that sales was bought. Uh, once you arrive at that point, that's going to be where you're going to be breaking for that last corner. So let's take a look. And uh, compared to last year, this year there's no really reference for that last corner, right? So unfortunate. Either way, to start your lap, you can take a wide line like this. Uh, but uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter where, when you're starting your lap. And bring your car over to the right hand side. Spot that 50 meter board on the top right. That's going to be your braking reference. And we're also doing this in the official time setting where there's a lot of shadows. So you can see where it's difficult to break and whatnot. Now anyway, into turn one, I prefer to not take the curb at all. But stay very close to it because the curb really unsettles the car many different ways you can take this corner one two three i like to stay to the middle here uh, the more you are to the left the better it is as it helps to open up the next right hander which you can fully take the curb right as long as you're not touching that green part on the outside where my tire is that's probably the track limit anyway and use all the track on the exit and now important for you to keep all the way to the left Take as much curb as possible, but only half of it. Otherwise, it drags your car into the curb and you can lose the back end sometimes. So now drive all the way straight down into turn four. This is the end of sector one. Look for the 100 meter board. Brake right after that. Let's say the braking board is gone, which it always does. You can take a look at the front right tire where the black patch is. That's your reference. And now in turn four itself, you want to take a lot of the entry curb, but you have to remember uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Put half the car on it. And I prefer to take it in fourth gear for a bit of better stability and exit. Stay tight again to the left to minimize track distance. And now we head into the infill section. Right around the 50 meter mark, that's where you want to turn in. And you want to downshift to sixth gear and you want to maintain at least 50% throttle while you're going uphill here. Uh, that's going to carry momentum and all the way to the second right hander try to stay close to the right hand side so it'll help you to straighten out the car much quicker once you arrive here and now what you want to do for the next right hander here is on the left hand side look for that crypto.com bot that's going to be your braking reference again from far away and uh, brake in a straight line and trail brake down to third gear and take a lot of that inside curb uh, in my attempt though i actually missed it but yeah unfortunate you can take half of it uh, put half car length more on it either way on the exit once you are done straightening out the car immediately you want to turn left but before you go there you can see there's a downhill section immediately and then it's going to be uphill again so it's going to be understeery at first and then it's going to be oversteery once you're going uphill stay tight to the left and I'll let the car run wide so there you go so looks simple right but now again you have to bring your car quickly to the left hand side where you see there's a exit road meeting the barrier which is closing in that's your re braking reference roughly around there that's where you want to brake again you can take this in different ways uh, you can take it tight early or you can uh, exit uh, tighter later uh, and this is as much curb as you really would need to take you don't need to take more than this let the car straighten out quick on the exit and throughout this next left hander again it's downhill and uphill you want to take this curb it will help you rotate the car around the corner and gain you a little bit more lap time 
And now finally we arrive at Junsao once again to finish the lap. As I said, look for the Salesforce bot on the right. That's going to be your braking reference. And uh, we actually missed the apex a little bit and we lose a little bit of time on the entry and exit there. But nevertheless, on the exit itself, all the way to the finish line, stay to the left as tight as you could. That's going to minimize track distance and it's going to gain you more lap time in your hot lap and qualifying session. For the race, you can just take, you know, the normal way as usual, right? Um, yeah, uh, except if you're overtaking, definitely faster on the inside line. And now let's head into the setups uh, very quickly if you would love to check out other setups it's all in the description there's a link to the playlist and also in the top right now set up high downforce very very high downforce around here i'm using 4640 as my race setup here and uh, well you can actually use a little bit lower downforce also if you want and i will recommend you going down about five clicks on downforce on the front and rear wing to give you roughly about the same uh, front to rear balance in the car and you can play around with the front wing you want less you want more it's all up to you you can even go 50 40 wings that's totally perfect here and then we move on to transmission 90 or 100 whichever you prefer uh, it's equally good uh, throughout the entire track off throttle 10 percent for qualifying 20 for the race can even go 30 for the race if you really want more stability but there's no point to it and uh, engine braking keep it at 100% it really helps to slow down the car in a lot of these corners unless you're really struggling with uh, locking and you can't find anything else then you may try 90 uh, there's very little difference anyway suspension geometry everything to the left minimum values is the same thing for all tracks and now in suspension uh, yeah, because there's a lot of uh, undulation, elevation changes around here, you need to have the car a little bit higher off the ground. And as a result, you will need to run the suspension a little bit softer to give you the lap time again. And uh, I'm running 2460 on the right heights, which is just perfect for me. And uh, I feel that if you want to run a little bit stiff on the front suspension, let's say all the way up to 41, you can go down to 20 on the front right head so just a little bit of an option there for you and uh, yeah anti-roll bars usually we start out with 21 21 you can drop the front to 18 or 19 if you want a little bit more mid corner turn in but the car may be a little bit unstable on exit and quite the opposite for the rear you can reduce the rear if you want more stability on the exit uh, Otherwise, you know, keep it at 21, it's going to give you maximum rotation and you can adjust uh, other things to give you the stability you need. And uh, then, then we move on to the brakes, which is quite conventional, 100% pressure, 54 brake bias. Although in the race, I will say 55 and 56 works much better on the, you know, race performance on the medium and hard tires. And speaking of which, for the race, you definitely need maximum tire pressures also for qualifying because it always quite easily around here, um, especially when you're running such a high downforce, right? And now let's say it's going to be raining. What do you do, right? A uh, few adjustments that you can do around here. First off, start off with this setup. Go up on the front wing about two clicks or three clicks in the pit stop. Let's say you're fixed with the setup. You're not lo no longer changing the setup. And before the race starts, you could probably, uh, you know, use a higher downforce to begin with, like 50, 45, 50, 44. It's going to be much better in the rain, but you may suffer a little bit in the, in the straights on the drives. You can even try 20% off throttle with 90 engine braking for the rain so that it stops the rear from locking up easily. And everything else, it's going to be exactly the same. And you can uh, possibly experiment with 97 or 98 brake pressure to avoid the car from locking up that easily in the rain. And there you go. That is a track guide and a setup guide for the Sao Paulo Grand Prix at uh, Interlagos. A very beautiful track. I love it. Uh, but it's so tricky to drive to get one lap perfect. And here's the hot lap. I will see you next week for the remaining four tracks in the calendar. Take care everyone, stay safe, bye-bye.